He works as an IT specialist at Shaw University. Please welcome to the stage, Elroy Seegers. Well, one correction, I went to Shaw University. I actually worked for EPA. And why did you put me behind her? I don't, man, I don't <laughs> even know. That's a tough act to, to follow. First of all, I want to get a show of hands. Who has an iPhone here? Raise your hand real quick if you have an iPhone. Great. Wow. Put your hand down. How about Androids? Great. So, <laughs> the reason why you have what you have is because it's one of two things. IT or planning. Fill of dreams. If they build it, y'all going to be in those long lines waiting to get that brand new phone. And you know you will. Because I've been there before, too. So, the thing is, in IT for EPA, we work very closely with the research department. And it's good because uh, they allow us to help them out as far as doing their projects. And one of the things we work with them on is working on the high performance computers, HPCs. We allow them to share time on those computers in order to do their projects for modeling. And they have these huge data sets, real huge data, data sets. And they, they can spend hours and days running their models at any point in time. So the thing is, when it comes to gaming, because this is about gaming night, the researchers want to be able to figure out how can we take what we have and show the public what we do in, in the lab. So they came up with this game called Generate. And it can be played at any level, elementary, high school, college, and community, if you want, in a community event. So our game is really, because I work for the EPA, it is centered around the environment. But the neat thing about this, this game is, uh, it is it's really a, a collaborative effort when it comes to kids. So this game here is, helps you to understand the impact of air pollution, greenhouse emission, and also the impact of water. Now, the big picture is this right here. I'm going to get to gaming. Give me a second. Uh, the big picture is, it talks about the primary energy resources and how it converts it over the end user sectors and also the energy services that it uses. So, whew, now I can get to the fun part, the game. There's between three and five teams, and it can be a, a few members. And they, every team will get this here board. It's called a grid. Kind of like a power grid. And there are the pieces that you, that you will get in your bag. So each team does not have the exact same pieces. I could have two nuclear or somebody could have one coal. So it, it's, it's done that way so you can see that it's not always equal and you won't be able to see the difference between what one team has and another it, to, to create communication. In the top right hand corner you see, you see a number. That number indicates what it takes to build that type of thing. The bottom right hand corner is like 29, you see nuclear, it's what it to, to run it throughout the course of the year. And the left hand number is the air pollution that it gives back to carbon dioxide. So when everyone gets, when they start, they get their bag, what happens is this right here. You got to take uh, your, your piece, put it on this hill grid, fill this whole grid up. And then once you fill your whole grid up, you take one person from each team and they come to the front and they talk about the impact to what their grid is made of, the nuclear, the fossil energy, renewable stuff. You see over here what says fossil energy, you see some numbers that's green. That's carbon dioxide. For the first round, we zero that out because we want the kids just to understand how the game works. The second round, we multiply that times one. And what we do, after, after they go through the first round, you will be amazed of how the kids become very um, competitive. Because it's a first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place. So they understand, hey, why did this person get more wind and I got more nuclear, I got more coal? So it starts that competitive edge. But in doing that, what happens is they begin to plant a seed in their mind to understand how the environment works for the future. So this game is really about planning. Uh, so once they get through the third round, the, the, the numbers in the left-hand corners, they are multiplied by time two, three, or four. So by this time, you get to the third round, it's, it's really um, about the kids trying to understand, hey, you know, I want more pieces. I want different pieces because you start to give them more pieces in between each round. The first round, the second round, you may give them things like uh, the, the, the windmills and solar, solar panel. So they begin to do a matrix. They begin to say, okay, let's take this in, let's take that out. And you have a different result. And then you say, hey, what did you get this time? And they begin to talk about the impact to the environment. The neat thing about this whole thing, the kids are learning all along. It's a game board, but they begin to understand the impact to the air pollution, carbon dioxide, and the water. Because they understand that, hey, this is about the future. 
So you're planting the seeds. Can you imagine your kids around a board game learning about the environment that's going to impact the future for years to come? That's the neat thing about this here game. It does, even though the game is called Generate, it generates the juices in them. And, and between the games and, and the sessions, these kids, they really go after it. They understand, like, hey, I need more pieces. Can you give me more pieces? Let's barter. They exchange. And then between all of that, they actually are explaining why I need renewable energy. They're explaining why I need less coal. They are bargaining pieces between the games. So they are learning about the environment. Can you imagine your kids are actually understanding what the environment is going to look like in years to come? It's a, power, it's a powerful tool, even though it's planting a small seed of understanding about the environment. Even though these kids are around the board game, as you see, that's, that's part of the grid. Even though the kids are around the board game, can you imagine this is around the board game today, but in years to come, they could be in the boardroom making decisions about our future? You're a kid. You may not see it right now, because trust me, my kid, I didn't see it either. <laughs> but he's in the Air Force today, he's doing great proud of him. But this game is, is so, so impactful. It allowed us to go in, in the communities. I have a fan here. He was just telling me, one of the speakers, that he actually played the game. And I said, you may know more about the game than I do, because I only played it twice. <laughs> so, and right here, I say drive through. The reason why I say drive through, because this is the IT part. We, I love my job. Why? Because I love working with researchers. And part of working with researchers, they allow us to work with them on planning. You might say planning is a big part. As long as we allow to work with them on planning, we can do anything. So I always tell, tell the researchers, don't just drive through and tell me what you want. Come on in, sit down with me, and let's create a plan in order to do what you need to do to get the results you're looking for. So that is the biggest thing that I love is I love my job. I love working with researchers. So I think that's about it. All right. No questions. I'm done. <laughs> Now is your time to ask questions about a government agency using the power of gaming to help teach. Raise your hand. I see both of you, but you've had your questions. I'm gonna let's see if anyone else wants a turn. All right, we've got one right up front here. You look familiar, but okay, never mind. Uh, where can you get the game? It's actually on online, but if you want to, I can make sure that you can. There's my information right here. You can hit me up, and I can make sure you have access to it. And the, the neat thing about this here game is that before COVID, it was only in person. What well, COVID made us pivot. So now the game can be played virtually. And it's actually a 22 page document that I had to read between this week and last week to get this all in five minutes. So <laughs> I did it. Next question. All right. Also, we're giving out some swag for everyone to ask questions. In case you're wondering, because it's not clearly obvious, the, uh, the, the, these are dog bandanas. So. Uh, also great for cats, I'm told. All right, uh, next question. We, did you have a question here? All right, question right back here. So you meant? It's on. It's on. Oh, it's just me. Uh, so I mentioned, or you mentioned that the game is available online, but I'm a middle school teacher, and I would love to use this, but I don't have time to cut out all the pieces. Is there a way that I could get it pre-made? So are, you, are you a teacher? Yeah. Yeah, she's on the pay, y'all. So we all need to chip in and help her print out this stuff. <laughs> Because you know, my son's a school teacher too, trust me, it ain't, you ain't making a lot of money. But, it, once again, I would say if you want to reach out to me, I, I'm pretty sure we have resources in order to help you print out those things. Because like I said, we do go out to schools, I love to volunteer, I go to different schools and speak. Uh, not about EPA a lot of times, try to talk about myself, but if you just reach out to me, I'm pretty sure I can help you out. We have a lady by the name of Kelly Witter. She goes around to a lot of the schools, and she does provide those kind of resources in order for you to play those games. All right, next question coming from the front row here. Actually, this isn't a question, so we can keep the bandana for the next person. But, but you need to talk to the eSports guy. <laughs> <laughs> I do, why? Because he's going to uh, show you how to put this online so you don't have to cut out parts. See, the thing about this here is, you're right. <laughs> You're right. That's the government at its best, y'all. <laughs> True facts. Other questions about how you can gamify learning even in the context of a government agency. <laughs> I'm here on the wrong night. 
I don't know. Can, can you add like 3D models of the nuclear plant and animate them, like blow it you up? You can and do stuff? a whole lot of things if you 3D print it. That I don't know. But uh, I'm gonna talk to the epic person. We're gonna figure this thing out. <laughs> All right, give it up for Elroy Seeger.